Press Information Bureau baka Central Bureau of Communication menteka sengik kalau pelong yaka program bapa bantah hotel Shillong naga bantah ban penpau perthai yaka jing rekam jaga sokar un Nandra Modi hakini kikhanai senam kibalalai hakini ka program ulat jangka jalan mekhlaya upaku cawhan ulalang ukongsan balai dolang ruki ofisar jangka sokar jalan ki ofisar naga sokar pereng bakam juru naga North Eastern Council rengkat bat kinong tok khobor jangka jalan Ibu ini kini keren akan dikatakan program ilang ikong percaya mukim editor jangka Shillong Times ibu lakukan halor kencing long jangka memer yang akan dikisni kebab menta. Ikong percaya lakukan halor kencing jabok jengkiwa, kencing ti dayong pathar, kencing ti mau pathar, kencing tengah bat kikui dek kebalang kencing ma, kencing em jeng ubriu, bat ya kencing memnat terkam jangka sorkar, kebab buat kikap ilang bahap mentuklar daka Supreme Court dan daka High Court menyadaya ke memer yang akan jalan mekhlaya. Kompetisi ialah kerana dua halau kencing jelor jika memang yang nama kencing tima ban kayi cepat Bangladesh. Nangta ia kencing penerkam kibiru dua orang nama kencing kudor jangka gas LPG bat kikiwede. Between implementation and that program, and also the inability to enforce any rules that we come up with. We have come up with a number of rules on environmental protection. But just go to our rivers to see how those rules are violated every single day, every single moment. And over the years, I think we ourselves, as citizens, have been reduced to citizens that are incapable of thinking for ourselves, by ourselves. We always need government to tell us, do this and do that. And this includes even managing our waste, managing our garbage. Why does government have to tell us how to manage our garbage? I think common sense should tell us that. And now we have to be told that throwing garbage into the rivers will ultimately kill us humans because one day there will be no more rivers to feed us. And our rivers might not be able to deal with the toxic substance that we throw into it, especially you know, uh, rotten garbage gives out methane gas. How much of that can we take? And we have to understand that the river is life. If the rivers dry up, it, our lives will dry up. So it's difficult to understand why our education system has not taught us this symbiotic relation between us and nature. And when we talk about why we are cutting down trees, why we are you know, uh, quarrying where we should not, then the excuse is livelihoods. How can we continue to have destructive livelihoods? Do we, in Meghalaya, do we still need to produce charcoal? We know that that Ujwala scheme was launched with the intention of preventing people, housewives, from using firewood. But how is that scheme working out at the last village? There is no one to supply LPG in the villages. And LPG anyway has become too expensive for the poor to afford. So it's a scheme that has not worked. I hope that uh, the government will review this scheme. And those that are in power, I hope will communicate this to the government of India so that every time you have a scheme, you also ensure that it works in the different terrains of this country. We are a diverse country. Topographically, it's a difficult country to manage. So we need to be looking at this. This region is also known to be a biodiversity hotspot and it has 825 listed medicinal plants. And I know for a fact that if there is one institution that is working well, it is the Botanical Survey of India. They have been working very effectively to ensure the survival of plants like the Taxus Bakata, which we have here in plenty. In Khasi, we call it uh, Dingble. We know that this tree has uh, cancer-fighting properties. It, it can produce, it is used to produce anti-cancer medicines. We also have other medicinal plants which we need to popularize and which we need to teach our young ones to preserve. Otherwise, with the cutting down of our forests, we are losing all these biodiversities as well. And it's important that we communicate this at the formative stages of our children's life and connect them to the environment. I think we, in the present situation, 
there's too much of classroom teaching and there is environmental studies with no connect to the real world. We don't have nature rambling trips for kids now. And that is the problem. We have you know, compounded their problem by giving too much to study and very little experience of the outside world. So while in the nine years of the Modi government, we have seen attempts at promoting biodiversity and environmental causes at the level of states, there is a complete either lack of will or inability to reach down to the lowest levels. And we find, in Meghalaya at least, that the High Court is doing more to prevent environmental disasters by addressing the operation of illegal, illegal, illegally run coke plants, illegal coal mining, rampant mining of limestone without any regard for environmental consequences, and in this state, in our own state, we have 300 trucks daily plying with boulders from here to Bangladesh. How long can we go on like this? And what kind of rules do we have in place to check all this? Even our rivers are overexploited for sand mining. What else have we not exploited? In fact, I think we humans will be responsible for the natural disasters that we are seeing occur occurring around us. And we talk of lack of awareness, and I think it is here that maybe the PIB and all of us in the media need to show people the consequences of their actions. 